So you want to become a professional football player. In this series, I'll take you behind the scenes to meet the experts to see what it takes to actually get there. Every football player dreams of getting that massive transfer to Chelsea, to Bayern, to Barcelona. But to do that, you're going to need an agent and a good one. But how do you find that agent and what can they actually do for you? We are going to go talk to an agent, but not just any agent. There are thousands of agents out there, some good, some bad, all ready to sell players their dreams and make millions in the process. They've quickly become public enemy number one in football. Er hat einen geldgierigen Piranha als Berater. Love them or hate them, players need agents to help them navigate the complex world of football. That's where Torsten Wirt and Ruth Agency come in, number one in Germany, representing players like Kai Havertz, Sadio Mane, Mark Andre Ter Stegen, and Serge Gnabry, to name a few. With a profile of over 100 players in the top leagues, there's nobody better to give us some insight into the world of agents. We'll start with an easy one. Yes, yes, please. Make all it right. easy in the beginning. <laughs> Are all agents money hungry piranhas? That's really an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think that's the most common public perception. It comes maybe back from the time when when the work of the agent was really deal-making only. You know, agent came in, made a contract, disappeared again. Maybe there's a little truth in it, um, but looking nowadays at the role of an agent, I think it's just, uh, yeah, not, not true anymore. So besides making lots of money on ridiculous transfer fees, what does the modern agent actually do? The deal-making, yes, it's, it's one part of it and it's still there, but nowadays it's a really let's say, very holistic and 360-degree uh, approach. Yes, you are there for deal-making, you are there for the sports side of it, but you are there as well for the business side, for finance, for marketing, for press work, social media, and you are there for the private topics as well. Depends a bit on the, on the relationship, but sometimes you are you're even considered as a part of the family. And when you're so close to a player, there's much more than, than deal-making only. Nowadays, the life of a football player is more complex. Players are often considered brands outside the pitch from a very young age, which can make their lives hard to handle. But still, does a player really need an agent? I think at a certain point of time you really need one. A lot of youth players already have agents, and I think it's not a healthy development when it starts too early. Um, so I don't see a reason to have a 13 or 14 year old uh, boy having an agent. Looking back at our history, for example, at Kai Havertz, uh, he became a top star uh, Bundesliga player at the age of 17. Mm -hmm. And then within 10 or 12 months, such a rapid development, um, then, then you really need an agent because there are so many things in such a short time uh, that come into your life that I think it's simply not, not easy to handle. So you definitely need an agent at some point in your career. But now, more than ever, fake agents are taking advantage of players who dream of becoming pros. For players, it's a big decision because your agent will be advising you on some of the biggest decisions of your career. The problem of our profession is that there is no entry barrier to it. I mean, everybody can say he's an agent. There's no degree, there's no university education. Um, you simply register with the DFB and then you're an agent. There's so many people trying to get into it because it's super attractive, you know, it's football, it's a, it's a huge passion, um, it's financially attractive, which uh, million dollar business is there without entry barriers. So how can a player separate the good agents from the bad? A good agent always has a long-term thinking not about short-term success. Apart from that, being honest, being open-minded, being reliable and working as a team. You have to be authentic. The people should feel that you really mean what you say. Is there chemistry? Do you feel this trust? Do you believe this person sitting in front of you, what he's saying? And looking at his track record, what has he done? Um, how has he worked with other players? And then I think you can take a decision. Torsten stresses the importance of the relationships he shares with each of his players. Different players have different needs throughout their career, and a good agent has to find out how to best help each individual. Mature players, in my personal case, like um, Per Mertesacker, Lukas Fabianski, guys who are uh, in the Premier League for, for 10 years, 
um, they don't need daily advice. Younger, maybe a bit more um, insecure, and who need these interactions. And it's as well part of the story to call on a Monday and say, how are you doing? How was the weekend? How was the game? By having those conversations, you get an understanding. You work on the relationship. It depends a lot about on, on the player, on age, on the stage of the career. One of football's most famous agents, Mino Raiola, was a controversial figure in football. While disliked by many clubs and coaches, his players, which include some of football's very best, considered him a father figure who always put their best interests first. How do I get you to be my agent? Usually it's the other way around. We come to the players. This world of football in terms of um, the player scouting and, and, and transparency, it's, it's so, the, the clubs know the good players all around the world, you know, it's, you don't have this, this story anymore that there's this uncovered diamond in, in Portugal and nobody knows him. With so much pressure to have an agent, many players search desperately to find someone to help them take the next step in their career. This can result in players overlooking important factors that can hurt them in the long run. Most of the time when you're hunting desperately for an agent, I think it's maybe not the right way. As long as you are promising and the top talent in your work, you are the, the enabler to your own career and then the agent becomes your partner and who helps you to become better. Focus on, on your skills and on your performance first. I mean, so it's probably fair to say that if an agent is contacting you, asking you to pay them pretty big sums of money, it's not a good idea. Yeah. What kind of advice would you give to uh, promising young players who want to make it to the next level? Don't listen to someone who says to you in the first meeting, I get you a deal. You know, who says, hey, I, you need to change club. Mm -hmm. And who comes with promises to, to change club. I think then, then you know he's not, care, not, not worrying about you. Then he's worrying about the next deal. Those young boys, they, they all have the same dream. They sacrifice youth with the target of becoming a professional football player. But the majority of them doesn't reach the goal. Once they feel, hey, this, this could go wrong, those young players, they are insecure, they, they tend to get nervous, and then you have to give them stability. Staying calm in stressful and hectic moments, staying focused about relying on yourself and relying on the environment you have around you. When Serge Gnabry was coming to the end of his contract with Bayern, there was uncertainty on whether he would renew his contract or find a new club. In the end, he chose to re-sign until 2026. Sadio Mane also made a high-profile switch from Liverpool to Bayern. So, how does your agent help you in the biggest moments of your career? You go through scenarios, you, you listen to him, what, what he's currently feeling, what his, what his um, opinion and understanding of the current situation is, and then you try to, to analyze with him together. And you, you are there to, to analyze, to prepare and to guide him through the process. But at the end of the day, the player needs to take the decision. So if Ter Stegen called you and said he wanted ah, to go you. from Barcelona to Real Madrid, what would you say? Uh, I tell him, let's go and that's going to be your last day in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> you always have to listen, yeah? And you have to understand what drives him uh, saying that. And then you have to discuss it. I mean, uh, what I learned is that you should always listen first uh, and then understand what, what's the motivation behind that. Maybe it's not only about Madrid, it's maybe the, the, the message he wants to get across, hey, I don't feel well anymore in the club where I'm at the moment. And then maybe in the end you have to tell him, hey, that's a bad idea. Uh, or maybe it's a good idea. Do you ever I, would, I wouldn't tell him to go from Barcelona to Madrid. But, you would yeah. say no. <laughs> but if Real Madrid wins the league, then would you be like, okay, maybe we could think about it? No. <laughs> <laughs> so there are good agents out there, and then their piranhas. But the good agents will focus more on getting you the best opportunity and not just on the dollar signs. Don't get caught up in the promise of a perfect contract or money, but instead focus on your football because you never know who's watching. And at the end of the day, if you're really that good, the agent, they'll find you. The really funny stories I tell when the camera is off. 
It's off now. <laughs> Keep rolling. <laughs> so now... <laughs>